Okay. Just burn that afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's not going on YouTube or anything. Okay. Great. So I just wanted to first ask how um, what your affiliation is with Keller Williams. So um, January of this year, mm -hmm. we moved from DZ Powder and Partners mm -hmm. uh, to Keller Williams. So now Keller Williams is the broker, and we work inside Keller Williams. Okay. And before, so it's the same team, but you just moved brokers? Um, it, it, yeah, basically. We've added a couple of people to the team. But these these three, <coughs> this, this core team came over in January. And then we've Luis, uh, Hector, and Jeremy. Uh, you won't meet Hector and Jeremy today, I don't think, but they're they're new. So we're, we're expanding. Great. And Brenda. And Brenda. And Brenda. That's right. Is she here right now? Yeah. yeah. You may meet Brenda. Okay. So have there been any changes since the move? Have you been like focusing in different areas or looking to grow the company? Looking to grow the company for sure. Uh, we don't we don't really focus on areas. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we focus more on people. Yeah, we focus more on people. That is exactly right. So the areas come second, you know, the people come first and wherever those people are we that's where we go. Mm -hmm. Which is a little bit different than the way some real estate agents do it, but um, what was the uh, the initial question? I lost you. I, I just why. wanted to see if there were any changes since you. Oh, moved. then growing. Yeah, and then growth, you said growing. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely <coughs> growing, mm -hmm. and that's that's why we're here. Um, we're given the freedom here to um, really exploit our brand, mm -hmm. Clark Living, um, and figure out you know exactly what we want that brand to be and. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've had, when I started in real estate 13 years ago, 12, 12 or 13 years ago. Um, it's actually 15 now. It feels like 100. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Clark, saying 13. Clark Living, I needed to start it's between um, behind the scenes, like I needed to start an LLC and mm -hmm. do all these different things for tax purposes. And so we came, my wife came up with the name Clark Living. And so that, had, and then the website was like, well, let's just call the website Clark Living. And then the email address was like, well, I guess we already have Clark Living. Let's just do Steve at ClarkLiving.com. Mm -hmm. And it's always been sitting there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it hasn't been as a brand. It hasn't been fully realized until this year. This is the year that we we took it, uh, and you know, we're really working on blowing that up. That's Allie's main role mm -hmm. is director of marketing. So her job all day, every day, is to expose the brand to new places and new people and do, do all sorts of cool things like that. Could you tell me a little bit more about the brand and kind of how you differentiate yourself from other real estate companies? Well, we try to go at it from an angle of being more of a lifestyle company mm -hmm. than just a real estate company. So as opposed to you meet a realtor, you have a transaction with them, you say goodbye, they give you the keys, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, we try to create really long-term relationships and be sort of like a holistic, full-service company where if you need a contractor or if you need a tattooer or you need a masseuse or if you need a personal chef, we exactly. have all of those yeah. people in our little community. 100%. It and they're all going to be like consistent within the brand. You know, mm -hmm. if, we, if you get along with us, you're going to like everything Our that we people, send you. For sure, yeah. So I feel, um, I've always felt weird about calling myself, but now we're, mm -hmm. myself is a bunch of people, but I've always felt weird about <laughs> calling myself a real estate agent. I mean, that's technically what I am, yeah. but it's it never felt like the full description of what it is, you know, I mm -hmm. slash we do. And so uh, I feel like we're more of a concierge service that happen to be experts in real estate. You know, we take care of the transaction, but that's only one of <coughs> many, many, many things that our clients get from us. Mm -hmm. What and are some of the other things that you offer? Um, well, it's kind of like Ali was yeah. saying. I mean, it's not like today, as an example, mm -hmm. we closed two deals today. Okay. So there are two individuals out there their families or anything, but obviously, you know, two individuals that are now, we're done. Mm -hmm. We started the process and we closed escrow today. And I think traditionally that means we're done. And we may or may not ever talk to that person again, or I may send them a note in a year from now saying, oh, it's been a year since I sold your house. That's really, the job doesn't end for us mm -hmm. on the closing date. That's really, you know, if, if you truly are a concierge on some level and creating a lifestyle, 
they know that they can call you for anything. And that can be something as simple as, hey, we just moved into Pasadena, as an example. Um, what are some good restaurants? You know, or, hey, where do you get your, your clothes dry cleaned? You know, it can be anything. And um, and it can be very niche stuff, like she was saying. I mean, like we want to get a tattoo. You know, we don't want to just walk into a random tattoo place. Like, who do you recommend? And we're going to the West Side. You know, my wife and I are going to go to Santa Monica this weekend. Do you know of any good restaurants there? And then we we make sure that they get the information mm -hmm. and oftentimes set it up for them. And we make sure we know all of our clients well enough to know, like, so-and-so would be into this restaurant or this area or wouldn't. Exactly. So yeah, it comes back to the lifestyle again. Yeah. Um, we, we make it a point. A lot of people will meet a client and just get to know the transactional, you know, responses. Uh, you know, what are they looking for? Three-bedroom, two-bath, what area, what city, what school? Uh, we do ask those questions because that's important for the transaction, but I feel that we go beyond that. And we spend time with them. Steve, I know, spends a lot of quality time with the clients just talking about life and what they're into and what their backgrounds are and, you know, what kind of music they listen to, what food they eat, are they vegan, like, and they talk about a lot of things locally um, that, from his personal experiences, whether it be professionally or personally <coughs> with his family, that, you know, that, yeah, well, I checked out that new restaurant. It was great. Oh, my God, the food was amazing. And you've got to try this dish. And mm -hmm. and so those kinds of things, uh, they go beyond what I call beyond the transaction. That so we sense. build, yeah, it's the relationship. And why do you think it's important to have this kind of service for people? Uh, I think it, it's it's an interesting question because, to me, there isn't any other way. So, mm -hmm. so. To be, you know, to make it important to do it this way, it's like, it's almost counterintuitive because I think it's a detriment to not do it this way. <coughs> this is this should be, like, level. This should be par. This should be what everybody does. This should be Standard. the default. This should be the default mechanism: is that you treat your clients um, like human beings and not a transaction. So, this this the same cheesy thing I've been saying for over a decade. I'll go ahead and say to you now. Um, <laughs> But it was the single most important piece I got when I started, and so I'm trying to impose this on everyone in my world, is that if you focus on helping people, you will make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. If you focus on making money, you won't make any money. And so, you won't help me. And you won't help anybody, and it's, it's a fail. So people get into this business, like mm -hmm. any other business, they get in to make, make as much money as they can. Yeah. And they're always looking at the dollar. They're always focusing on the dollar. We do not do that. Um, we are highly focused and tuned in with our clients. And if we listen to our clients and help them, and whatever that means, helping them may mean not getting them the house. Mm. You know, if they've given us a lot of information about their life and we feel like they're settling and we can get them a better home or it's not the right time to buy or it's not the right time to sell, then we're going to advise them <coughs> that way too which is counterintuitive to the average real estate agent who's just trying to make the transaction get paid. So we feel strongly that if we treat our clients this way consistently throughout all mm -hmm. the process, that they will be lifetime clients, forever clients. And that's, that's our goal. How'd I do, ladies? Very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Do you have any um, testimonials or examples of people that you've helped through multiple transactions? So if you, um, absolutely. And so on our website, <coughs> I think one of our one of our most important tools on the Clark Living website are the client testimonials, mm -hmm. their videos. And um, I still, we've been doing these for years now, and I still am shocked each and every single time that a client says, like, yes. I would like you to bring a film crew into my house and video me talking about how great our experience was. To me, that's that's shocking. So you get the Yelp review, you get a Zillow review, you get a whatever. But to to me, you know, they're the two ultimate um, compliments are someone taking time out of their life and going on video, which is like in perpetuity about what they've experienced. And then the other highest compliment is when they refer someone to us. When they say to their friends or their family members, like, look, if, if you're going to do real estate, you got to go. You got to go hang out with Clark Living because it's, you know, it's pretty incredible. Those are the two biggest ones. 
you know. So you can absolutely go over to the website, and there's there's a lot of videos and you know, client videos. Great. And then also on your website, um, I noticed the neighborhood guides. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about why you did that and how those are important? Yeah, well, I'll start that, and then Alec can probably jump in. But um, that is going to be a um, part of the website that just grows and grows and grows mm -hmm. and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, we just find it very important for people to understand this city. So when I started, I came out of being a professional musician mm -hmm. into real estate. So a lot of my first clients were uh, musicians okay. that knew me through you know, the record industry and <clears throat> the music industry, and then they're like, oh, well, okay. Now he's a real estate agent, and he speaks our language, he can help us. They're moving from New York, they're moving from all over the world to LA, and they say things on the phone like, we'd like to live in LA. And you're like, LA's <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And you know, we know, because we live here, mm -hmm. we understand that you can't live here, well you can, but you don't want to live here and work in Santa Monica. Yeah. You don't want to buy in Marina Del Rey and get a job in Valencia. You don't, so mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to help in that whole helping thing. You know, when you're really trying to help an individual or a family, you're looking at the big picture. So the first question is, you know, you're moving here, w what does your daily life look like? Where are you going to be going every day? Okay, so that's gonna, that's gonna take out certain areas of the city because it's so big. So those area guides are a good reference point. Mm -hmm. And they look cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like anything else that education and communication are kind of the key to everything. So if we, like he's saying, if there's somebody who's moving from a different area and they don't understand the little neighborhoods, neighborhoods, then if we can teach them, give them like a quick overview of if you want to be near this type of activity, then check out this neighborhood. If your plan is to, you know, have kids in the next couple of years and you want to be in a good school district, then maybe check out this place that's near this place, and then you have that time to be hip and cool, but also have a smooth transition into parenthood. Do you think that the neighborhoods are unique to Los Angeles? Because I've noticed that since I moved here, that Los Angeles has a lot of different little pockets of different communities. Well, I don't know, I don't know exactly how to answer that question, because okay. I've only lived here. <laughs> okay, but that being said, you know, you're born and raised here too, mm -hmm. right? So, and you, Same here. Oh my lord. <laughs> We've all traveled. We can all still. Right, but the reality yeah. is, mm -hmm. the reality is, you know, you've got three native Los Angelinos sitting here. Yeah. And, and from totally different parts. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing, like I said, you know, this is now 12 or 13 years of doing this. And I find myself consistently driving into a neighborhood or searching for a house in a neighborhood where I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know where that is. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. And so there are a billion, you know, little tiny micro markets in LA. Mm -hmm. An example, um, I mean, if you think about Pasadena, yeah. what is that? What's our, what's our price point in Pasadena? Well, I've got $700,000. Where do I buy in Pasadena? Pasadena is $400,000 to $25 million. Yeah. Areas all over. I mean, it's, you know, so... Every, like Glendale, as another example, mm -hmm. I don't think really anybody understands what Glendale is. Mm -hmm. You know, the perception of Glendale is the Americana. Yeah. Well, that's where, I, yeah, that's where I go to the ball. I get to go to the Americana. Glendale is huge. I mean, it goes all the way up the two freeway into Montrose. It goes south of the 134. There's an area that we keep selling homes in called uh, Adams Hill mm -hmm. that, like, to me, it's a gold mine. Mm -hmm. It's the next Silver Lake. It's... <clears throat> it's you're getting a house for less than a million dollars with a view of the world, good architecture, but people still don't even know where it is. And up the hill from everything that is so hip that it's gentrified <laughs> surrounding neighborhoods, right. and you're five minutes away from it with a bunch of privacy and fantastic views. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a fantastic question because it's just, we are learning on a day-to-day. -day. I mean, it's just everywhere we go. I mean, like, Lamert Park, I didn't even know what that was a year ago. <laughs> Same here. I was and like, I've oh, you mean, my... you mean Le Mieux Park? Le Mieux. And they're like, no, no, it's Le Mert. <laughs> I'm always trying to be cool. But, Is yeah. that near Hancock Park? Exactly, Hancock. <laughs> so, 
you know, now we're starting to learn about Hill. View Park and Baldwin Hills mm-hmm. and Lamont <coughs> Park and then right over Sagamore the hill. Park. Yeah, Sagamore, but like right Sagamore over in that area, that. you know, I didn't realize that like There's that whole more. section is blowing up right now. Mm-hmm. And then right over the hill is Inglewood, and Inglewood's where the Rams are coming. So that's going to be just blowing up. There are all these just little niches that it's it's fun. It's it keeps us fresh because we're learning as well. That's so true. I think that's true of like most major cities that mm-hmm. there are you know a bunch of you different think. cultural yeah. enclaves, but just the sheer size of LA, it just yeah. sprawls. I like it. I like that term more used for micro neighborhoods because yeah. we know the neighborhoods. Yeah, but I think we're learning more and more as we dive into this and the different upcoming neighborhoods. There's the micro neighborhood. Well, and, and Luis, right. who you met briefly, yeah. he uh, he too was born and raised in LA. Mm-hmm. Check us out. Wow. And so, again, on the on from a different part. Right. Yeah. So he's from a east very side. specific area on the mm-hmm. east side. Uh, is it Lincoln Heights he's from specifically? Lincoln Heights, yeah. You know, well, which he grew is, up in Lincoln Heights and Boyle Heights. And Boyle Heights, and then El Sereno's right there. Yep. And so you you so now like I know where that is. Yeah. If you wanted to, sh- you know, hey, we want to buy a house in Lincoln Heights. I I can pull that up on a computer and I can drive you there. But he knows. Street to street, what's different? Right. And oh, no, 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 no. History block. Yeah, and block. he's like, oh, you the Jones live in that there. house. They sold that. They moved over here. Da 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 da. Mm-hmm. I know the guy who owns the local, you know, market. Oh, and by the way, you definitely don't want to be south of this street because mm-hmm. it did, like that's a micro. Yeah, neighborhood. Micro. I mean, that you know, he and he knows that. <laughs> so it's fun to learn all that stuff. What would you say is the most challenging part of your job? <laughs> 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 um, I, I know what mine is, but... Why don't we go around? Why don't you start? Um, I'd say the most challenging part is because we do our business as helping our clients on a day-to-day basis, that changes consistently based on their needs. Mm-hmm. And for us, our biggest challenge is keeping up with making sure they're getting what they need and we're still managing the transaction uh, mm-hmm. from the office. So it's, it's spending quality time with our clients is our, our biggest priority and being available to them, but also, you know, getting the office and the documentation done and getting, getting the inspections done and meeting with the other agents and making sure to follow up um, on the actual transactional stuff. It's a, it's a big challenge of balancing. Um, and then when you have, you know, 10 transactions at the same time and you have to hold six open houses on the same Sunday, and you have you need a four team. people yeah. available. Yeah. So so that's our our I guess our consistent challenge. Yeah. yeah and sure. we do it. Mm-hmm. And the only way we do that is obviously as a team. Um, not any one person can handle all of that. Um, mm-hmm. We've been very successful and lucky, and uh, you know that we continue to grow because of that. I think whatever the like what Pauline is saying, whatever the main big challenges that realtors have across the board, mm-hmm. like time management and scheduling mm-hmm. and all of that stuff, we have that, but we are really good at that. Yeah. So the only thing that comes to my mind actually is traffic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> have, you don't have any control over traffic, yes. and this is a constant barrage mm-hmm. that never really gets better and does affect all of your appointments, all of your scheduling. Correct. You're constantly kind of updating people that you're three minutes behind or you show up someplace ten minutes early but they're five minutes behind. Mm-hmm. So the, the only, everything, every other challenge we can kind of control. Correct. Mm-hmm. But that, not the trash. Much. And it never goes away. That's awesome. That's good. <laughs> and I think my answer is a little different, I think. Mm-hmm. And this is more of a personal struggle, mm-hmm. I think, is that I love so much of what we do that I don't ever know when to turn it off. Mm-hmm. And so this isn't a, you know, it's not a nine to five, it's not an eight to six, it's not a seven to seven, it's a forever, 24 hour a day, seven day a week. Mm-hmm. And I've also got a wife and two children <laughs> and yeah. it's it's a constant struggle to have the discipline to be able to turn the phone off. Yeah. <laughs> um, and to wake up at two in the morning and not go over to the phone and start checking emails. Mm -hmm. So for me, the struggle is an internal struggle of just the balancing act because I think at the risk of sounding a little bit cheesy and maybe making what we do more important than it really is, I'm not sure. But I remember buying a house, my first house. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a real estate agent. And my wife and I bought our house in 99 in Silver Lake. 
and being completely overwhelmed by every single aspect of the transaction. And there was nobody there to really walk us through and explain and tell us, hey, listen, here's what the next two weeks are going to look like. And oh, and by the way, this is when the money's due and da da da. And so I think what keeps us fresh and good is understanding that each client is feeling that and never marginalizing that. So if I look down at my phone and it's 8.45 and I'm at a dinner and I happen to like look down <laughs> and I see that it's ringing and I'm like, and I see who it is, mm -hmm. there is a good chance that I know why they're calling and how stressed out they are and that they really need me to pick up and just say like, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Your 3% isn't due until tomorrow. It's all good. But I also have to balance my life. Mm -hmm. And so that's that to me, that's the struggle. It's like you always want to put your client first, always. Mm -hmm. Then there's that whole wife and kid thing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't appreciate not being first. And in, in reality, they should be first. But yeah, it's, it's a struggle for sure. <clears throat> so that leads into what I was going to ask next. <coughs> Excuse me. About the emotional components of buying a house and moving somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so, again, maybe making it a bigger deal than it is. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Uh, but you have to keep in mind, like, how big of a deal it is for the person who's it's buying it. It's the yeah, biggest try deal. to, like, not it's their minimize biggest deal. that. It's the biggest thing going on in their life. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> oftentimes, any expert, any psychologist would tell you that maybe when you're pregnant, mm -hmm. don't buy a house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because, you know, these are two or three of the biggest things that are happening concurrently in people's lives. But oftentimes that is when someone buys a house. That's, yeah. that's when they feel like, you know what, this house that we have is too small and we have a baby on the way. We need to sell this really quickly and we need to buy one really quickly. And they're doing that while they're pregnant or while someone's out of town on work or whatever. And so um, the emotional aspect of this job is like 99 point seven five percent of it i mean it's everything it's very much it's everything yeah it's the biggest thing going on in their lives and if if we don't show up if we're not there for them mm -hmm. um and if we don't act as their psychologist when they need <laughs> to vent to vent <clears throat> um then we're not doing a very good job for them you know and because we're catching people oftentimes at their most vulnerable mm -hmm. moment you know, we're talking about money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stresses everybody out. Major, major sums of money. Uh, moving, which stresses people out. I mean, there's just so many factors to this that we're catching people at their most vulnerable. And so you have to have a heart to do this job well. You have to be able to listen to someone and understand that, like, they just need someone to hear them. Mm -hmm. And as soon as... As soon as they let it go, they're going to be okay. But you need to be able to stay on the phone with them for five minutes or an hour and a half, mm -hmm. whatever they need, that's what you got to give them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think sure. that's the difference, too. It's <clears throat> like uh, an example, a recent transaction we closed a week ago. You know, the wife was very overwhelmed. Husband worked a lot, kids, schedule. And, um, you know, every step of the way, whether it was one document or one email or what's the next step, the questions were very overwhelming to her. And um, just having the availability to let her vent and be confused on the phone and just have someone, an adult, to, 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 like pull, to just say the words and try to plan and organize in her own head what she needed to do in the next two days and balancing that with her kids being picked up and all that stuff. Um, I think that is the difference between being a Clark Living agent with the Clark Living lifestyle versus any other agent in any other company or area is that's what makes them our life client rather than just our client because and that's what we strive for is helping them uh, we don't have to sit there and listen to the emotional we choose to um, and that's why they become a life client because an agent doesn't we're not licensed to sit there and listen to someone you know stress out and be overwhelmed we could just say here's an email if this is what your schedule is you know um, I sent you an email you know you, you should know the steps and I'm sorry, um, you're going to have to go to Yelp and figure it out yourself. Yeah. You know, what a lot of agents do that. Uh, we're, we're very different because we care. So we actually will listen. And even if we spoke to them for 30 minutes 
and actually didn't have anything different mm -hmm. change on the schedule. But the fact of listening to the person for 30 minutes and letting that person just kind of get it off their chest, now that's a life client. That's the difference. Totally. Yeah. I think that one of the things that really sets us apart from other agents or other teams is that we are all actually very calm, low-key people generally, and mm -hmm. stress is contagious. Yeah. So if you have three clients and mm -hmm. one of them is super right. stressed out and you're talking to the other two, and you're stressed out over that client and then you bring yeah. that stress into the other transaction, yeah. that happens a lot, I think. Yeah, it's true. And that I just, hear other agents. Yeah, it's like a disease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what people really enjoy about working with us is that we don't do that. We try to be super calm with everybody because stress is the death of everything. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've said it a few times, and I've heard you say it, which is like, yeah, no, it's all good. Like, everything, don't worry. Nothing to worry about it. We've got that handled, you know, yeah, that's, it seems like a bigger deal, but remember, we do this every day, so we are on top of that for you. Well, and I think... You know, it's a confidence, a trust that they start to build with us. Um, and I, I think, like, kind of playing off that a little bit, the reason that we know about Pasadena now, the reason that you're here, um, there are a lot of things that have led to this, but Waleed um, Delaware. Yeah. So he was the one who brought you guys up to me. He's the one who, uh, uh, you know, initially said, like, you should contact them and see if they'll put something about your mm -hmm. listing and whatever. And he's the perfect segue into that, that question is because you have to spend a lot of time in this business finding an amazing body of vendors and referrals out to not just lenders and escrow officers and title officers, but a plumber, a handyman, um, some you know, uh, someone to come clean their house once a week. We, when we endorse someone and we say, "Oh, you should, you should use so and so," they're great. We're putting our name behind that person, mm -hmm. and if they're not great, then we're not great, and they have to go away, and we have to put someone in there who is great. <laughs> and so, someone like Walid, I mean, he had a challenge with a buyer of ours and we got the good news this morning that he fought the good fight and won. And it's like knowing that when we say it's all good, mm -hmm. we got this. Yeah. Knowing that it's all good and we got this. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. If you're straight up bullshitting someone and going, it's cool, we got this, then you get off the phone and go, oh my God, what are we doing? Now i got to figure out how to Right. Do this. You know, we've spent a long, long time and a lot of you know, hours putting the right people to complete the puzzle. Mm -hmm. You know, someone as, I don't even know what the word is, but, you know, a handyman. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone that you're going to pay an hourly rate to come by your house and do a bunch of random little fixits. If I say, hey, listen, so and so is going to come over to your house tomorrow at 10, he's awesome, and he doesn't show up, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. So, We've worked really hard at, at maintaining good relationships with good vendors, and you know I think that our clients reap the benefit of that. Definitely, because you never know, um, even with Yelp, sometimes it it's a hit or miss. <laughs> you know, it, it's helpful. I'm a big Yelp fan, so I, I do read reviews and stuff mm -hmm. before I hire somebody. But when you know them, and we've done, we've referred them to 50 of our clients for the last two years. We can literally vouch for them with, without a flinch, you know. My personal recommendation has always been yeah. Trump. Yeah, it's always better. Review. Exactly. So I use the word Trump today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> better. <laughs> better. Yeah, that word is ruined now. It's <laughs> ruined. He killed that word. It's really unfortunate. Oh. Yeah. I, just, I just saw what um, Usher was wearing on the back of his shirt. Something about Trump. I couldn't read it. The artist Usher? Yeah, when he performed at the BET Oh, at the BET, Awards. right, exactly. I, I couldn't read it. It said something Trump, and I was like, oh, what does it say? We can Google that for sure. <laughs> well, yeah. We have several small computers yeah. around in us. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, I think we, when I say beyond the transaction, it's like literally one of the, should be like one of our extra taglines, mm -hmm. is because it's, we really do go beyond the transaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, even down to vendors and, it, it's just like he's saying. We're, they're, we're everything that they're thinking of every day. Oh, yeah, about, it's pretty crazy. About sixty days. Every day, the, when they wake up or before they go to bed, is 
oh my God, I have to remember to call Steve or Allie or, mm -hmm. you know, one of us. And, and I have to make sure, what is it about that they needed me to do tomorrow? I mean, you know that every night during that whole transaction, whether they're looking for a house or about to close, sell their house, they're thinking of us every day. They're trying to figure out, yeah, the next move. If we're not communicating on a very high level. I mean, think about that. Yeah. So how do we keep our clients? So it's hard for us not, not to think about yeah. them yeah. because we know they're going to, we know that we have to keep them, you know, informed. But on the flip side of that, and it's definitely not required to be uh, one of our great friends to work with us. <laughs> um, but on the flip side of that, I mean, personally, some of my most meaningful friendships, you know, that I would call right now a, a, a friend, a very close friend, started as clients. You know, and you go through the trenches together, and then you come out the other end where they have implicit trust in you. Mm -hmm. And for better or for worse, um, and this is more of a me thing. I think we all we all play into this a little bit, but I'm not really pretending to be someone I'm not. And when you spend a half a day with me looking for homes, at the end of that time with me. I think the client really knows who I am. Like I'm not pretending to be someone. I'm not. I'm not saying like I'm not this religion. Oh God, I can't let them know I'm this religion. Or, I mean, like <laughs> I'm. Yeah, I'm just who I am, and I think that lends itself to honesty, which can very well turn into a friendship. You know. I think that's true of all of us. Yeah, it's, I think that's, so. I think that's, that's, that's part the, of the clock living thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the big point: is to not just be genuine. And then that doesn't, total, total we don't genuine. have competition within the team because we're all different enough mm -hmm. that, you know, if you're, if you're a Steve person, then you go with Steve. And if well, you go along with Pauline, then yeah. you go with Pauline. Yeah, it's yeah, all and good. I, I think in these times, people have a very low tolerance for fakeness mm -hmm. um, in society and bullshit. And people don't have time and they certainly would not give an ounce of trust towards someone they felt any kind of a vibe of ingenuineness, ingenu ingen ingenuineness? Is that a word? Ingenuineness? Dis disgenuine? Disingenuine. Disingenuine. Um, Let's work on that for a little while longer. Yeah, yeah. so disingenuine. Ungenuinality? So like, so like, for instance, I mean, this was really funny because when I first started working with Steve, and that was before Ali was on board, is, you know, I, I, I came from a very corporate, corporate environment with suits and hid my tattoos and my hair was dyed jet black, all jet black, no color. And uh, I had made a decision to do a career change so that I could be myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even in that transition, there was a little bit of that old fear of mine of, of okay, well, I don't want to hurt the business and I don't want people to prejudge us, you know, as a company and as a brand. I want to make sure I, I'm supporting the brand and the professionalism. And... Um, you know, we did a first open house, and I wasn't sure how I was going to dress. If I was just going to let it all hang out and be myself, Not or I mean, or, you wore a bra. But, you know, yeah, yeah, but or like, or like, That's pull it joke. back and tone it down so that I would to go appear a certain yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And what he's talking about sitting in the car is, and I that day I made the decision that you know what we've talked about this, and what makes us different as a brand is, no, this is what it is, and it's okay if you're mm -hmm. uncomfortable with working or tr putting your trust in the biggest thing you've ever done in your life, buying a home, and you don't feel comfortable with what this is or what whatever we are, there's a million other agents yeah, with the go, suit. Yeah, go work with Go work with else. them because we're looking for a life <clears throat> client and we're looking to help people who want, who want to be a part of something. Well, and Pauline is like, uh, what, what is the opening line to your... On the website, and a walking paradox. A walking paradox, right? So you know, here you've got this thing going on, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Four foot eleven, you know, turquoise and pink hair, and the whole deal, and the tats. But behind it, if you prejudge her, you lose. She doesn't lose; you lose because behind that is the valedictorian of her high school, twenty-five years of being a very high-level escrow officer. You know, oftentimes, if not all the time, she's the smartest person in the room. And if you if you walk in and go, yeah, Allie's giving her a run for, <laughs> no. for sure. No, we, we're smart in different things. That's I'm why we never collaborate. The smartest person. <laughs> in the room. But um, uh, but you know, honestly, like I think I take huge pride in the fact that you know we aren't your average real estate agents. Yeah, we're not we your do. average real estate team. Um, 
but once you crack, once you crack the code, you get the good stuff. Mm -hmm. I think we're really lucky to also exist in LA where a lot of our clients actually look like us and understand us, mm -hmm. and we're not in yeah. sort of a little conservative yeah. middle but it's funny though, suburb like, where it's people don't get it. Agreed. People here get it. Agreed emphatically, but it is interesting. I won't. I won't. Definitely, I won't mention a name because he, he <laughs> lives here and works here, and you know he probably wouldn't dig it. But we sold a condo here, local Pasadena, walking distance from here, to a young lady who was probably early thirties, I'm guessing. And her father got involved in the transaction, <laughs> which happens, you know, it, the, that generation's looking out for their kids and making sure that they're protected and whatever. And this guy is probably early 70s, I'm guessing. Appears to be very conservative. Extremely. Fiscally conservative, uh, politically conservative. I mean, he's just Everything. a conservative dude. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's going to meet Pauline today. <laughs> uh, maybe, I, maybe I should be there. Maybe we get a stand-in who says, hi, I'm Pauline. Exactly, and exactly. What ended up happening is that this guy absolutely loved her and was fascinated by her and like totally got it mm -hmm. on every level and that was the moment because you were pretty new on the job with me yeah. that was the moment where I'm like you know what she's the best and like I broke through that <coughs> um, stigmata no, sti stigma. 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 Yeah. Stigma. Jesus. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Stigma. That's when you just start bleeding. Me and my words yeah. today. <laughs> I need to read Wait. a book tonight. Pauline broke through the stigma. I haven't stigmata. read a book in a while. Clark Living. Um, but yeah, so stigma, like, yeah. and I know exactly who he's talking about, and it was a very, very difficult process with him, you know, looking through every single report and every single step of the way, just nitpicking and pulling apart you know, different agreements and, and language and, and it was, but because I have the knowledge and the background and the patience and wanting to help, um, to make this good for the buyer, which was his daughter and the wife and having everybody build that trust. I, you know, I broke through that, that, um, barrier of their uncertainty or their uncomfortableness. And, and that's when I realized actually that is the, the yeah, that was a defining that, moment that, that basically solidified, I'm good. <laughs> like, it's all about yeah. helping them and breaking the barriers and just being, and owning it. Well, which goes back to the right at the beginning, which is, you know, she was single focused on helping them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once someone realizes that there's someone advocating you. They don't care what you They don't like. care what you look like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's true. Great. And that is like a big part of Clark Living. We don't dress the part. We don't. I mean, look at Luis. He's a freak show. <laughs> Everybody is pretty good looking, though, which always helps. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He I'm is like so good days symmetrical. Bad days. I don't know if you saw his No, face. perfect face. Yeah. He's like Elizabeth Hurley. <laughs> He's like a brown Elizabeth Hurley. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got turned down multiple times in the <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, so like, yeah, it's, it's funny because we. We'll, we'll get people who are interested in joining Clark Living and they come in here and if they in any way, shape or form, it's almost funny because it's almost like that we don't want to prejudge, but they walk in and they feel that they need to dress the part mm -hmm. and play this role of what a realtor should be like. And we immediately from the probably the first two statements that we say on our welcome greeting is we want to see the real you take that job, like take all of that off. Who are you? Because that's if you if you're fake, you're not gonna you're not gonna join the team. So we kind of like instantly want to see beneath what all that is. What's the real deal? You I know. I think that was when I first. So my intro to this yeah. was meeting the two of them mm -hmm. at lunch, mm -hmm. and I didn't. Oh, we I didn't Google the sushi image place. anyone. I didn't think about yeah. it. Yeah. I'm an idiot. I remember that. <laughs> and, <laughs> the sushi and, place. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sushi of Naples. So I wore essentially what is to me a costume because I don't yeah. dress. Yeah, that's what you're trained to do. And as I an saw interview. this one walk in, and I was like, Oh God, I could have just worn my clothes. I could have been. Yeah, yeah, walking. I walked in with a tank. And they were, just, we were like, drinking like, sake. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I feel like they were kind of chuckling, looking at me like, that's not what you would. Well, and the reality <laughs> is, um, at some point, by the way, I, I just found out that my wife and daughter are having lunch with me. I didn't oh, know that. Oh, good. So that I think cool. they're here or coming close. But anyway, it's all good. So, um, so we can wrap up. No, time. no, it's all, it's all good. You should talk to them. They're more fascinating than me anyway. <laughs> but um, 
But a snapshot of that conversation is where we're sitting right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, is this, did you expect this office? You know what I mean? No. Like, did you? Well, He's actually, asking I've, you. I've walked by here because oh. I go to that gym, so I have seen it. Right, so, right. Yeah. But, so but I mean, but that you was. You know what we're like when you're not here. <laughs> but like, you know, what people think of is, is, is all of this. Mm-hmm. You know, very corporate, very cubicle, very phone call, very whatever. And, you know, we have this killer designed amazing office with a bar mm-hmm. and a TV and music. And we want our clients to come in instead of sitting at, at a conference room mm-hmm. table that's like, sterile and high stress and like out of your element you're like oh god oh you come in here and just chill out and just sit on the sofa and hang out and let's have a conversation let's find out what you're looking for and how we can help you and so we're just we're from the ground up we're really trying to make the experience a human experience yeah our clients are actually living human beings as in Clark Lynn. Oh. They're not robots. Clark living <laughs> human beings. It's like a assembly line stamp on. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Sealed that client. Stamp. Stamp of approval. So tell this us about you. Client. We're going to interview you now. <laughs> oh, no. Then I'll turn off the recorder. <laughs> 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 <laughs>